when you watch the aurora, usually quietly setting in the sky, but become suddenly very bright and active, can cover the whole sky in five minutes. Still fascinates me. My name is Shunichi Akasoku. I study the aurora. When you see the aurora in Fairbanks, gas from the sun hitting the earth around, and that causes a gigantic electrical discharge around the earth. When you look down the earth way above North Pole, you can see the ring around North Pole. And if you're standing in one location, you can see only this much. It's a very large scale phenomenon. I think Dr. Akwasofu was driven to deal with the auroras, but beyond his expertise in that academic, in that very narrow field, he always goes a little bit beyond what is expected. He had the opportunity to bring visitors to Fairbanks and connecting that with science, putting Fairbanks on the map in a way. I was born in a small town in the central highland of Japan. My mother had a very favorite song, and it started something like, should I go ahead or go back to Japan? I'm thinking under the aurora. That's the first time I heard the aurora. Those days, people didn't know exactly where the auroras were. I was really curious. I went to the library, found a scientific paper written by Sidney Chapman, but I tried to read it. It was so difficult, all the mathematics. Sidney Chapman was probably one of the foremost mathematicians working in more esoteric sciences in England. And for many years, he was an advisor to the Geophysical Institute here in Fairbanks during the winter months. Because he loved it here for the Aurora research. Well, Dr. Akosofu was very much interested in some of the things that they had in common. So he wrote a letter to Sidney Chapman and Chapman responded. He said, if you want to understand those questions, come to Alaska and uh, work under me. He, like Akasofu, acknowledged that there were young people who had questions, and what he wanted to do was to help this young person who wrote him from Japan. And his offer was, why don't you come to Fairbanks and we'll figure it out, so that maybe they could take things to another level. That's the way my Alaskan life began. Over time, he was fascinated with the auroras and the fact that he would write these very simple books explaining what the auroras were and how much time he spent getting Japan Airlines to create those special tours from Japan to Fairbanks. And then he would meet these tourists as they would come and welcome them and talk to them so that they could understand what it was that they were seeing. People in the visitor industry saw that that was really something very important and so it's become pretty much an Arctic phenomenon now. You go to Rovaniemi, you go to places in Canada, and there are charter flights now coming just to see the auroras. I became the director of the Geophysical Institute. And during this period, I thought that we need a place young people come to from different countries and work together. He saw a need for an institute that emphasizes on Arctic research 
And also at the time, the Geophysical Institute was running out of space to be able to house the researchers. Not many people were on his side and the funding was not there. He had to go to DC a lot and even with that appointment, he would go and just wait. Maybe for a 10 minute appointment, he'd wait all morning just to get a chance to see Ted Stevens. I can only imagine what it was like when you're working outside your own bureaucracy and you're working between governments and you're working with international currency issues and you're trying to find a way to bring all of those bits and pieces of economics, of scientific research, of nationalism, of foreign exchange, and a vision to put something together that could unify those. It took 10 years to build this. International Arctic Research Center is established to study climate change because one nation cannot do it alone. And the real value of that is just starting to come now because we get researchers from all over the world who are here. And it's that combination of scholars, of researchers, and that's the key is when you can broaden your focus to show that everyone has a common goal. It's now become more and more important in many ways and hopefully this institute will help